Hi, good morning, Hope. Uh, great to be with you. Um, this morning I want to look at Psalm 84, particularly verse 5 especially. I'm going to read a few verses uh, in a moment. Uh, first, just to say I noticed from my records that I preached on this exactly 10 years ago, June uh, uh, 2011, and uh, it was, strangely, just as we were about to move away from our then venue, uh, the Sixth Form College, and move into uh, the high school where we've met uh, these last 10 years. So uh, it's really strange and uh, quite appropriate that these verses were on my mind again as we consider moving from that school into a uh, maybe third completed granary building. And uh, so I want to look at what we set our hearts on as a church, as individuals, because what we set our heart on really changes our life. Let me read a few verses from Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty! My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Verse 5. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Bacar, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Well, that's just a part of Psalm 84. And particularly, uh, I want us to consider verse 5. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. I don't know what your heart is set on. But as a church, I want us to set our hearts on pilgrimage. And what you set your heart on really does affect your life. Uh, 20 plus years ago, uh, we lived in Bedford. Uh, we moved there about 29 years ago, I think. And uh, at that point, uh, there was a Bedford County Athletics Club. We're just beginning to take off. And there was a group of uh, boys and girls, young men and women, teens as well, who used to run past our house regularly along the green near our house and we used to look out from our bedroom window and see them uh, come rain, come freezing cold, come snow, whatever the weather. They'd set their heart on becoming athletes, amateur athletes. Some of them did really well. Amongst them was a certain Paula Radcliffe. If you're uh, younger you might not uh, know but Paula Radcliffe became world marathon champion. In fact, she held the record for the marathon for 16 years. She won the London Marathon three times. She won the New York Marathon three times, as well as the Chicago Marathon. Uh, she won the World Championship for the half marathon, the marathon and the cross country. And, and that despite the fact that she suffers from asthma and recurring anemia. Wonderful athlete. And uh, the seeds of her success was really like any professional athlete, rooted in what she set her heart on. And as a church, I just want to um, consider, what do we set our hearts on in this phase of change? It's very easy for us to have what the Bible calls a divided heart, uh, which causes us to be wavering, causes us to be unstable. Uh, one of the scriptural characters said, Lord, give me an undivided heart. So I want to commend this psalm and especially verse 5 to us at this season. The psalmist has settled something, <coughs> excuse me, in their heart. They settled their heart on pilgrimage and they say, blessed are those, three times happy are those who set their hearts on pilgrimage, even though pilgrimage seems to be something of an uncomfortable choice. A pilgrimage is a, a journey onwards for a spiritual purpose. Of course, in the time of the Psalms, they did pilgrimages annually, sometimes more, three times uh, for some, uh, to the, uh, the festivals, the Jewish festivals. For us as a church, there's a danger that we can settle into a somewhat comfortable existence. So the, it's a prophetic question, really. Will we settle it in our hearts to pioneer? to be pilgrims, to move forward for a spiritual purpose. 
Our purpose as a church is threefold, to pursue God, to serve people and to export hope to the nation. And that requires decisions, decisions to pursue God and to pursue his will. And that's a heart issue primarily. As a church, we're privileged to be part of um, the New Frontiers family of churches. Now, and within that, the, the kind of tribe of, of catalysts. That's, a, that's a, an apostolic people. We're on a movement. There's no well-worn paths as we seek to uh, plant churches and spread God's kingdom throughout the earth. And really, our history as a church, on the, the kind of Baptist side, which is our his, history back in Victorian times, was also a pilgrim people, a people that didn't settle in a central church in Worcester, but planted uh, congregations in the villages and the suburbs around. And I want to call us afresh to be a pilgrim people at this time. Of course, if you think back to uh, the context of this psalm, there were other ways you could exist in the desert. And spiritually, that's true too. In the desert of this world, there's other ways that Christians can exist or subsist. You could be a spiritual Bedouin. A Bedouins have adapted. It's a whole culture, amazing culture. But they've adapted to a, a, a low expectation, subsistence model of life, which takes them from place to place to place until they arrive at the first place again. I know some Christians that are like that. They go around somewhat discontented, but existing, not putting roots down, moving from church to church, uh, till they end up going around the mountain again and ending up where they first started. I don't want us to be like that. I don't want to be a Bedouin Christian. No, we settle in. We put down roots with one another. We're bricks in a wall. We're soldiers in an army. We belong together. We're building something. Other Christians are kind of like hermits. Just after the time of the New Testament, some people seeking to be pure went out into the desert and uh, found a place to stay and have religious experiences. They're seeking to be holy and we honour that desire. It's kind of less risky than pilgrimage. People like Simon Stylites, who lived at the top of a, a column, had food lifted up to him. Prayed a lot, that's great. But a kind of eccentric footnote to history, really. We don't want to be hermits. Of course, we're moving to a building. We want to, have, we want to experience God there. But our objective is not to be in a room having experiences of God. We want that, but we want so much more than that because the Holy Spirit, when he comes and gives us experiences, as on the day of Pentecost, gave him experience in a room, but pretty soon that burst out onto the streets around them. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He doesn't want us to be mystics. He wants us to be going out. He gives us his power, Holy Spirit amongst us, for us to be witnesses. So we don't want to be Bedouins going round in circles, purposeless. Believing, but purposeless. We don't want to be hermits, having great spiritual experiences, but keeping them to ourselves. No, God wants us to come to a settled determination. Settle it in our hearts to be pioneers, to be pilgrims, to move forwards with a spiritual purpose. And I noticed three, <coughs> excuse me, three characteristics of such a pilgrim people. And the first is an appetite for God. They're hungry. Are you hungry for God? He says in verse one of this wonderful Psalm, Psalm 84, wherever God is, is lovely. How lovely is your dwelling place? What he's saying is, I love to be where you are, God. You see, God is not just to be believed in, not just to be theologized about, important though theology is. No, he's to be relished. He's to be pursued. And I notice that's not a formal religious thing. He, for, for the psalmist, he says in verse 2, I'm yearning, I'm crying out, I'm fainting. Do you remember a, another psalm where it says, like a deer panting for streams of water, my soul is per panting after you, O God. The Apostle Paul takes that into the New Testament by saying, I want to know him. <coughs> Do you want to know him? It's an appetite for God. 
So as we contemplate what may be an uncomfortable, slightly crowded, maybe learning how to cope, squish together, kind of move into our, our next phase of church life, uh, COVID lockdown ending permitting, let's have an appetite for God. Let's focus on the things that really matter. The second characteristic of pilgrims is this, they, they travel light. I, I can't believe how, how much Debbie packs into a suitcase for a holiday. Forgive me, darling. But it's true. You think, what, what have you put in there that this suitcase weighs so much? So different, for example, if you were going on a, a, on, on a trek. You have a backpack. You travel light. People that are, that are on a pilgrimage tend to travel light. A pilgrim's got to be responsive. So characteristic one is they're hungry, hungry for God. Characteristic two is they're responsive. They're ready to move in a moment. I love um, Isaiah. You remember when God says, who will go for me? Quick as a flash, he says, here I am, send me. There's that responsiveness. Will we be responsive in the next phase? My guess is during COVID, we've been able to be a little bit passive, Though we've done well as a church, loving one another, we've tried to do our best broadcasting messages and so on, beginning to regather now. You know, the New Testament says, let's throw off everything that hinders, everything that slows us down, everything that might trip us up. Let's be responsive people. You know, as citizens of the kingdom of heaven, we're pilgrims. We don't really belong down here. The New Testament actually uses the word aliens. We don't, we don't belong. We're just passing through. Let's have a determination to be responsive to God. And my guess is as we move into the granary, with all that that might mean, we're not even quite sure what it does mean, but further details will follow. I sent an email this week saying, hey, we hope in early July to start meeting in the granary, two morning meetings and an evening meeting if you choose to go uh, to the encounter congregation. As we seek to do that, that's pretty much a picture of being a pilgrim people, isn't it? We move into the future, not knowing quite what it will look like, but we're travelling light, seeking to be responsive to God. So let's respond to him with faith, with prayer, with dependency. So hungry, responsive. Thirdly, they're enduring. Pilgrims endure hardship. They go on long walks for spiritual purposes. He talks in verse 6 about going through the valley of Bika or Baca. It's the Bika Valley, still there, still a desert place, still sadly a place of weeping. But in the psalmist day, it was a place of dryness, a place of vulnerability. You know, all people pass through such times, all Christians particularly pass through such times. Even churches can go through times where we have to dig in, times where we have to have a pilgrim mentality. And he says here, hey, as, as pilgrims go through the dry places, they make it a place of springs. In other words, they dig down for water. I want to encourage us to dig deeper into God, dig into his word, drink deeply of the Holy Spirit every opportunity you have. And he says they also look for autumn showers. There's two things here. He's going through a dry time and there are times where he has to dig deep into God, into his trust, into faith, into his word. And there are other times where the showers of autumn come. In the east they were important to keep the crops going and he's looking out for autumn showers, showers of the Holy Spirit. We have to find our refreshment in God. Let's look to him. There will be times of great joy. It was wonderful this week to pray in the granary, to dedicate just the ground floor to God as we open that up for other people to use and for, for the church to use increasingly. That was a great, great evening. But there will be times where it's more tricky, times where we feel squished, times where we miss how things used to be, where we got less spread, where we're confined for a few months before we open up the next floor. Hey, Let's find our refreshment in God. Let's be responsive. Let's be hungry. Let's be enduring, finding our refreshment in the Lord. And then lastly, the psalmist, I notice here, knows his ultimate destination. 
So our next destination is to start meeting in the granary. And I praise God for that. Looking back, let's celebrate and say, hey, thank you, God. You brought us this far. And now we're doing this, the first floor up. You brought us this far. You've provided. Now we look to God for the next thing. And we, and we do look forward to using all the floors of the granary in due course. But, you know, that's not our ultimate destination. Oh, it's going to be wonderful for Hope Church to have a, a base for mission in the centre of our city. But you know, our, our ultimate destination, it's, it's not that building, our ultimate destination, he says it here, is to, so eventually each appears before God. You know, that's another characteristic of a pilgrim people. They know where they're going. We're living our lives before the audience of one. The one who really matters is the Lord our God. So let's live our lives before him individually, but also corporately together. Let's hang together. Let's link those shields of faith together as we advance into the next months and years of our existence as our church. Have you settled it in your heart that you're not a bedouin? You're not a wanderer. You're not just after hermit type mystical experiences. No, we're spiritually pilgrims moving forward with a purpose. Let's not be settlers. Let's be pioneers and pilgrims. God bless you.